So I just picked up this old laptop from Facebook Marketplace, and in today's video, I'm going to see if Linux can give it a second lease on life. Uh, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would appreciate it. So I spotted this ad on Facebook Marketplace for an HP ProBook 450 G10 laptop, saying it was in good shape, but needed a battery and was operating on Windows 7. Uh, so right away, I knew that this wasn't a 450 G10, but in fact, a G1. Because once he mentioned Windows 7, I knew this was not a G10 at all. Um, and the seller was asking for $100, which is way too much for this laptop. So I reached out and told him, hey, I'm not trying to lowball you here, but this is a really old laptop. And I offered him 30 bucks and he didn't hesitate to accept my $30 offer. So I wasn't even sure of the specs of this, but I like to check out old PCs and laptops. And after some research, my guess is this has an old fourth gen Intel chip in it. And you know, it doesn't look too bad considering this is a 12 year old laptop. Um, so for the ports here on the left side, we have two USB ports. We have HDMI out, we have ethernet, and a VGA port. And on the right side, we have a headphone and mic jack, along with two more USB ports. All right, now let's try to power this on and see if it works. Always kind of fun to check out Windows 7. Now, since this battery is dead, I do have to keep this plugged in for it to work. So let's see how long it takes to boot up. Okay, so it took about 43 seconds to get to the login screen. Uh, the seller did give me the password to log in here. I hope he deleted anything personal on this. Hopefully he did. All right, we are now in Windows 7. Kind of crazy to think Windows 7 was released in 2009, and I think it officially reached end of life sometime in 2020. Um, so let's see if this is still usable at all and see if we can get the specs of this thing. All right, as far as the hard drive goes, it says we have a 683 gig hard drive. And on the bottom, you could see here that we have an i5 4200M processor, which has two cores and four threads. And it's got eight gigs of RAM, which I was hoping for. I was worried that this would only have four gigs of RAM. Um, okay, and it seems that the seller left some vacation photos on this, which I will delete right now. And we got Microsoft Office 2010 here. Uh, so let's see if I can create a Word document real quick. And it looks like it is not fully activated anymore, but hey, it still works. Now, here's something kind of cool. This still has Microsoft Movie Maker. Now, I used to use this back in the day to edit home videos. Uh, I remember being really bummed that they got rid of it. This was super easy to use and very user friendly. So I wanted to see if this was, you know, still usable at all. So I plugged in an external hard drive with some videos and I just tried to do, you know, just some simple edits, just, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, video trims, stuff like that. And it took a while for the videos to import into Movie Maker, but, you know, it did work. And how about web browsing and YouTube video watching in Windows 7? Let's try it out. So sorry about the uh, camera trying to focus here, but here I am loading up ESPN and you know, it's not too bad. I can scroll, no problem. Um, you know, videos, you know, the video section is taking some time to load up when I scroll, but still not too bad. Here's some YouTube. Uh, I forgot to mention the display here is 1366 by 768 resolution. So no 1080p video on this, but you can do 720p. And speakers aren't great here, but can't expect anything too good with a 12 year old laptop. So it's fun to check out Windows 7, but now let's try to install Linux on this. And I want to install Linux on this SSD 
Um, what I'm going to do is pop this open to swap out the hard drive. Don't want to use an old school mechanical drive for this. First thing I'm going to do is remove the battery here. And I'm not quite sure how to remove the uh, back panel here. I don't see any screws. Let's see. All right, looks like there should be a screw uh, in the middle on the bottom here, but I don't see it. Looks like it was probably removed at one point or another. So maybe I could just slide this out. Hopefully this works. Let's see. All right, think I'm in business. Now I have access to the RAM and the hard drive that I can easily swap both of these out if I want. And nice to see that the RAM is in dual channel with two four gig sticks. Appreciate that. To remove the hard drive, I need to unscrew a few screws right here. I did end up having an issue with one of the screws. One of them just would not budge because the screw head was basically stripped. Uh, I ended up yanking it out, but probably won't be able to use this caddy again. So I just stuck in the SSD like this. Uh, this is not ideal. This is just going to be temporary. But, um, you know, we'll see. Hopefully this stays in place and this works. All right, with the SSD in there, um, then I created a bootable USB with Linux Mint XFCE edition on it. And with the USB drive in there, I did get the welcome to Linux uh, menu. And from here, I was able to boot into Linux Mint. But right now, it's just running on the USB drive at the moment. So I'm going to click on install Linux Mint to install it on the SSD drive. And not going to show the whole setup process, but it took about 12 minutes to install it onto the main hard drive. And in the end, it says to uh, restart. And when I restart it, you're going to remove the installation drive and it should boot up from the main hard drive into uh, Linux Mint. And sorry for the uh, out of focus blurriness here. All right, when I rebooted and tried to boot into Mint from the main hard drive, uh, I started having issues, and I'll show you guys right here what happens. Uh, I got this message, and then I got this message saying to please install an operating system on your hard disk. So I tried several times, and I kept getting this message. And after a few attempts, I removed the SSD and tried to boot into Mint from a USB to SATA adapter. And unfortunately, that didn't work either. Um, I kept getting this message right here. And it says I need to load the kernel first. And I'm admittedly not a Linux expert. So I tried to figure it out, but I just could not get it to work. So I then decided to try a different Linux operating system, specifically Pop! OS. And long story short, I couldn't get it to work with the USB, excuse me, with the SSD installed in the laptop. However, this time I did get it to work from the USB to SATA adapter. All right, now with a Linux operating system finally installed on this old laptop, um, let's see how usable it actually is. So for one thing, I can create documents and spreadsheets with their built-in Office software here. Now let's try some YouTube and web browsing. This has Firefox pre-installed, but you can use Chrome or any other web browser really if you want. And didn't have any issues watching some videos on YouTube here. And web browsing was acceptable. Here's Nassau.gov and this a particular website has a lot of images and you know it handles it pretty well. And here's another YouTube video. This time I put up these stats for nerds. And as you can see, you know, on 720p, no dropped frames. 
I also wanted to try out some emulation, so I downloaded PPSSPP uh, to try out some PSP games, and they work really well, as you'll see here. Now, you can install Steam on this as well and maybe get away with some, you know, really basic games, but I wanted to try some cloud gaming on this. So here's Fortnite using Xbox Game Pass Cloud Gaming. Uh, unfortunately, I did have some issues with this, specifically with the controller not working. Uh, basically, I couldn't, you know, turn to the left or right with the controller. Tried the, um, the um, keypad as well and could not get it to work. Okay, so kind of a mixed bag here with this old laptop using Linux. Uh, I couldn't get Mint to work on it. I did get Pop! OS to work on it, although only through the USB to SATA adapter, which is not ideal. Uh, I definitely want to have the SSD installed in the laptop. Uh, but Linux does make this laptop usable if you just want to, you know, browse the web, check email, watch some YouTube. Uh, looks like it's going to be pretty good for emulation too. I should really try uh, just installing Botticera on this. Uh, if you use Linux on really old machines, let me know how old they are. Are they over 10 or 15 years old? You know, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to do it for this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching.